Virginia's governor declared a state of emergency in Charlottesville today as white nationalists clashed in the streets with counter protesters. Groups including the Ku Klux Klan and neo-Nazis came from across the country to rally against plans to remove a Confederate statue from a park. Breaking news, terror in Charlottesville. Chaos in the streets as a car plows into a crowd of people. Pools of blood all over the ground, people screaming. I've never seen such a horrific, blatant racist attack in my entire life. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! The Charlottesville riots in August 2017 sparked a critical debate over the nation's Confederate monuments. While some people advocate that the monuments be preserved in their originally intended glory, others are pushing to have these statues and other Confederate symbols removed from the public sphere entirely. People who support keeping the monuments where they are see them as emblems of Southern heritage and pride. We're here to say that we're here to defend our heritage. On the other side, no hate. No fear. White supremacy is not welcome here. The opposition claims the monuments represent a stain on American history and that Southern heritage cannot deny its racist roots. They view the intent behind the South secession that led to the, our country's civil war was to defend a slave based economy and uphold the institutions that supported white supremacist ideology. This viewpoint claims that any objection to the racist implications of Confederate monuments are part of the controversial historical narrative celebrates other heritage, the lost cause of the Confederacy. Since the year 2000, there has been a disturbing rise in white nationalist groups, which has been drawing more attention to Confederate monuments in the past few years. The issue of Confederate propriety in public is a polarizing and contentious topic that has influenced violent protests, vandalism, and state legislative actions to protect the monuments. The horror of this debate questions legacy. Whose legacies are represented at the forefront of America's social landscape, and whose are being overshadowed or ignored altogether? The legacy of the lost cause of the Confederacy is created Promoters of the Lost Cause, descendant organizations like the Daughters of the Confederates and the Sons of, of Confederate Veterans, are largely responsible for the directing of the The Lost Cause narrative was being taught in schools and history textbooks in an attempt to erase the history of the South's shameful and immoral past so that the next generation is going to be The majority of the Confederate monuments are arguing that today are dedicated to the Today's Confederate society is one of the the removal of Confederate monuments, the same one that was to remove the Confederate narrative from Southern heritage 100 years ago, will only serve to remove the Another legacy of the Confederate is the The legacy of slavery and Confederate is told to the African American experience of resilience in the face of systemic racial oppression. And very few monuments memorialize the African American struggle for freedom and equal rights. In this video, I will cover five sites where Confederate monuments were built more than 75 years ago. An obelisk in Birmingham, Alabama, a boulevard in Richmond, Virginia, the surrounding grounds of the Georgia State Capitol building in Atlanta, Stone Mountain, Georgia, and a historic cemetery in Charlotte, North Carolina. Many Confederate monuments are located in public spaces, unavoidable to community members, and involves daily civic engagement, regardless of people's position or perspective. For example, Monument Avenue in Richmond, Virginia is aptly named for its Confederate monuments that line the busy boulevard that bisects the city and are often sitting at the center of major intersections. People who oppose the monuments and want to see them removed have made a compelling case. Joseph McGill, founder of the Slave Dwelling Project said, when many, when many see Confederate monuments, we don't think of their artistic or historical significance. We think about what they mean to us in our lifetimes. People do not see these monuments as works of art or beautiful centerpieces in our city's landscapes.
but as emblems of our country's heritage. For many, that heritage is a reminder of a shameful past that considered millions of Americans less than equal and not fully human. Those who stand for the protection of Confederate monuments and public spaces are seen as wanting to uphold this American tradition. People who advocate to preserve them as reminders of when America was great do not consider how this country was not so great for the many Americans who are not white. Jenny Harriet, Vice Chairperson of the South Carolina African American Heritage Commission, claims that when I see them, particularly the image of Ben Tillman, I only think of a bunch of white folks trying to hold on to something to help them remember the fallacy that they are better than us. Harriet refers to former South Carolina governor and senator Pitchfork Ben, who supported lynch mobs and was outspoken in his belief that blacks must submit to either white domination or extermination. In recent years, the movement to construct monuments and statues to figures who represent the African-American struggle for equality has gained much influence. Most notably, perhaps, is the statue of Martin Luther King Jr. in Washington, D.C. that was dedicated in 2011. It is located at 1964 Independence Avenue along the Potomac River across from the Jefferson Memorial. Its address referencing the Civil Rights Act of 1964, in which Dr. King was a key influence. Recently built in Montgomery, Alabama, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice opened to the public in April of 2018. This is the nation's first memorial dedicated to the legacy of enslaved black people, people terrorized by lynching, African Americans humiliated by racial segregation and Jim Crow, and people of color burned with the contemporary presumptions of guilt and police violence. Inside the memorial hang dozens of steel pillars, all of which are suspended from the ceiling and represent a county in which African Americans were lynched during the Jim Crow era. It is a powerful and sobering reminder of the racial injustice and violence perpetrated of, on people of color in the name of white supremacy in the United States. The number of monuments dedicated to the legacy of the Confederacy far outnumber those that honor African Americans in United States history. As of February 2019, the Southern Poverty Law Center identified 114 Confederate symbols that have been removed since the Charleston attack in 2017, but about 780 still stand. In Georgia, there are 114 statues dedicated to the Confederacy, uh, 110 in Virginia, and 97 in North Carolina, making up the three states with the most statues still in existence. Alabama is not too far behind with 60 statues, the number of monuments dedicated to the civil rights and equal rights activists is thought to be around a mere 77. However, an exact count is debatable as there is no single database for all of them. Taking this into consideration, the notion that removing Confederate monuments will erase American history seems to come from a one-sided version of our national story, which largely excludes the disproportionate numbers of public monuments between white Southerners and the black freedom struggle. Yet still government officials and lawmakers work to protect our Confederate monuments for the sake of remembering the legacy of the South. So for those self-appointed defenders of history and the monuments, they are eerily silent on what amounts to historical malfeasance, a lie by omission. There is a difference, you see, between remembrance of history and the reverence of it. A reporter with the Richmond Planet, John Mitchell Jr., wrote in 1890, the Negro was in the Northern procession on Decoration Day and in the Southern ones, if only to carry buckets of ice water. He put up the Lee Monument, and should the time come, will be there to take it down. This was his response to the dedication of the Robert E. Lee Monument along Monuments Avenue in Richmond, Virginia. In Stone Mountain, Georgia, a relief of Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, and Jefferson Davis is carved into the bare side of a large granite mountain. Stone Mountain was the site of the founding of the Second Ku Klux Klan in 1915, and the relief of the generals and president of the Confederacy was finished and opened to the public almost 60 years later in 1972. As of the 2010 U.S. Census, the town of Stone Mountain has a population that is 72% African American. It has become a celebrated theme park, including such amenities as gift shops, arcade games, a train ride, 
and a laser light show in the evenings. A visit to Stone Mountain can leave a person feeling disoriented with its Confederate fanfare and crowds of visiting families and preschool field trips. On my visit to Stone Mountain last July, not once did I see or hear any mention of slavery or Southern secession. City officials in Charlotte, North Carolina, have found a way to relocate one of their monuments, removing it from the former city hall to a nearby cemetery and placing it behind a wrought iron fence for protection after it was vandalized with spray paint. At the same time, this monument was taken down for cleaning and restoration in 2015, North Carolina lawmakers passed a protective law that mandated historical monuments to not be moved or relocated from where they currently stood. Since the monument had already been removed from its location at the time of the law's passing, Charlotte City officials took advantage of this loophole and relocated it to the Elmwood Cemetery across town. In 2017, the Alabama Memorial Preservation Act was passed, requiring local governments to obtain state permission moving or renaming historically significant buildings and monuments that date back 40 years or more. However, in January 2019, an Alabama judge ruled the law unconstitutional as it violated the 14th Amendment, which prevents states from restricting the rights of citizens due to the law's mandated fine for any attempt to remove or alter historical monuments. We have no real connection with the Civil War, but we are definitely a civil rights city in terms that this was the cradle of the civil rights movement. Uh, Mayor the, William uh, Bell says Birmingham was founded after the end of the Civil War, and the monument conflicts with the city's deep history in the struggle for civil rights. You don't want to see it? No. Because, uh, again, think about what it represents. The Confederacy was an act of sedition. It was an act of treason. The Georgia State Capitol building in Atlanta is another public space in which a series of statues has been erected to honor individuals who are considered important in the state's history. Many of these figures, mostly white men who held elected positions, have a contentious past and were outspoken white supremacists or upheld white supremacist ideals. To name a few of these historical figures, Thomas Edward Watson is one such figure who ran for office in 1910 as a populist, but later turned his political leanings to a more controversial stance, vilifying blacks, Catholics, and Jews. Another statue erected in 1907 is of John B. Gordon, who was elected to U.S. Senate, then governor, and was an opponent of Reconstruction. Gordon came from a modest past as a mine operator, but gained influence after he took over half of Robert E. Lee's army by the end of the Civil War. Following the war, Gordon was widely believed to have been the Grand Dragon of Georgia's Ku Klux Klan organization in, in 1879. Another statue is of Richard B. Russell, who was a bit less controversial in Georgia's history as he was an advocate for states' rights more than a racist. Russell, however, is quoted as saying, I believe that the Negro is entitled to equal and exact justice before the law, and that he is entitled to every right that I enjoy. There is nothing in our Constitution, however, that says we must enjoy these rights together at the same time and in the same place. A statue of Talmadge stands on the Capitol grounds because he was elected to four terms as governor beginning in 1932, but he died in 1946 before he took office for his fourth term. His final campaign ran on the premise of opposing a federal court ruling that disallowed the Democrats to hold a whites-only primary in 1946. Speaking out against the court's ruling, Talmadge claimed that they desire Negroes to participate in our white primary in order to destroy the traditions and heritage of our Southland. Of all the statues on Georgia's state capitol grounds, only one is not of a white man who held political power in Georgia. Located on the southwest corner of the property is an eight-foot statue of Martin Luther King, Jr. And while Dr. King was indeed an influential figure in the Civil Rights Movement, he did not focus his efforts on Georgia alone. Erected in 2017, the rationale behind placing his statue in the same respect as other historical figures from Georgia with racially contentious pasts poses an interesting conflict with the other statues. Why not choose Jefferson Franklin Long, for example, a former slave who was later elected 
as Georgia's first African-American congressman and the first black member to speak on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives. Or perhaps a woman from Georgia's history would add another level of representation to the icons on the Capitol lawn. McCree Harris was an educator at Monroe Comprehensive High School, performed with the Freedom Singers, and became an activist in the civil rights movement in Albany, Georgia. The decision, the decision to place a statue of Martin Luther King Jr. on the Capitol grounds to diversify the iconography surrounding the state building ignores the contributions of local Georgians and overshadows the efforts of women. So what is to be done with these monuments? Overall, most people do not advocate for the destruction of Confederate monuments. Instead, many believe that Confederate monuments should be kept where they are, but with added context about who put them there and who the statues represent. Others believe the monuments should be relocated to museums rather than in public spaces, so that people who are offended by them are not forced to interact with them. A third proposal is to move the monuments to historically appropriate locations, like Confederate cemeteries, such as the case in Charlotte. It is difficult to contextualize Confederate monuments where they stand today. Regardless of your personal stance on their fate, there is no denying that the issue of what should be done with them, their public prominence, and the continued promotion of the lost cause of the Confederacy is at odds with the values and virtues of today's American society. If one thing is true about Confederate monuments, it's that whomever erected them in the first place was certainly successful in establishing a narrative of American history that millions still hold on to today as part of their legacy and heritage. Perhaps there is nothing quite as American as a polarizing debate over right and wrong.